What separates the people like yourself and like other cricketers who play Big Bash from those cricketers who, you know, love playing grade cricket on a Saturday or even community grassroots cricket? You know, what separates you from them? Um, I think it's all your mindset. Like, you know, if you're ready to compete at the highest level, it's just about staying mentally strong and obviously training your skill set. Hello everyone, welcome to In The Corner, the place where every cricketer wants to be. I'm your host, Callum Dunk, and thank you so much for joining me on this episode. Please ensure that you follow, like, and subscribe to our social media platforms for more updates about the cricket that's going on around the world, as well as our latest episodes on YouTube, Facebook, and Spotify. Today, we talk with Brisbane Heat opener, Josh Brown, about his experience playing in the BBL, as well as his job as a bat maker for Cooper Cricket. Josh, thanks for joining me, mate. How are you? Very good, very good. How are you going? I'm very well, mate. It's a uh, very exciting times here at In The Cordon and I'm really looking forward to our chat today and discussing all things T20 cricket and bat making. Sounds good. Keen to chat about it all. Awesome. Now it's time for our opening segment, which is called Legends and Sledges. So we want to do something a little bit lighthearted, bit of fun to start off the episode so josh you've only you know been playing for the brisbane heat for a season so far but have you heard anything interesting whilst you've been out on the field maybe while you're batting or if you had a teammate who's just done a ripper sledge to put someone off their game i have had a couple of jokes that i've heard on the field and i've also caught i usually caught more sledges from my own teammates than i do the other team that pretty much sounds like my cricket life. So, Josh, you've had a remarkable rise in the T20 circuit. You've been playing for the Brisbane Heat, um, a team that made the finals when, you know, the odds were stacked against you with players going on the Indian tour. You know, it was a tremendous effort for the Heat to make the final and, you know, get within a very, very close, you know, shot of winning the title. But how's your experience been playing for the Brisbane Heat? and? You know, how did you feel when in your, your second game you scored a really strong 62 against a very strong uh, Sydney Sixers lineup that can, uh, had the likes of Sean Abbott, um, Steve O'Keefe as well? So how, how have you felt about your first season in the BBL? Um, oh, it's been a wild ride, really. Like, you know, going from working full time to playing cricket full time is absolutely unreal, to be honest. And yeah, that game, that pretty much changed my life, that one. Just... Everything seemed to come out of the middle of the bat that day and had a, you know, batting with my mate at the other end as well, like Mick Sweeney. We played a lot of cricket together for Norse and yeah, that just seemed to help. Yeah, that's terrific, mate. I remember sitting on the couch watching you, you know, hit balls <laughs> into the crowd and, and it's just an amazing story. You've come out of grade cricket in Queensland. You know, how long have you been playing grade cricket and how were your talents discovered by the heat? I've been playing grade cricket for uh, probably since I was like 18, but didn't really take it uh, seriously at all up until I was about 24. And then, you know, something just clicked, went from playing third grade to second level cricket in 18 months. And then from there, I've just been trying to dominate, you know, first grade for as long as I can. And last season, I think I got, I got 200 in the 2020s, like a real big one when, Darren Lehman was there watching his son play for the other team. So, yeah, that was a big one. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, we see so many players come out of the BBL or come into the BBL actually and just dominate from the get go. You know, it's been an uh, interesting couple of seasons for the Brisbane Heat. You've gone from struggling to fill a team with COVID going around to a team that's, you know, gone on to the BBL finals and, you know, within a few runs of winning a final. Could you just talk me through the atmosphere at Optus Stadium when you were playing in that final? Because you got off to an electric start in those first couple of overs. I think you made 25 off, you know, 10 or 12 balls. How do you keep yourself in check when the atmosphere is electric and you just might, you know, succumb to that pressure in the big moments? Yeah, I found that it was really hard to like, I had to try and keep myself at bay, like the first over, I didn't hit any out the middle. I nicked them all, but the second over, I was feeling pretty good. And just the amount of noise that there was was unbelievable. Like, just sort of carried you away with it. 
yeah, it's unbelievable. And you've gone from grade cricket to, you know, sharing a change room with the likes of Marnus Labashain, Usman Kawaja, Michael Nisa, Mitch Swepson, you know, guys who have gone on to play for Australia. How do you go from transitioning from grade cricket into that environment? And, you know, if I was in your shoes, I would be a little bit starstruck. Like, how, how do you keep yourself in check in those kinds of moments? Because that would be an awesome opportunity for you. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit of a weird one because, like, playing club cricket, like I had Joe Burns, you know, he's helped me a lot in the past couple of years. And then I've been, done a little bit of training beforehand with, like, the Bulls and the, the Heat squad and stuff like that. So I sort of knew everyone and we all got along pretty well. And, yeah, did get a bit Star Trek one day when I was at lunch and I was sitting at a table with, like, you know, Martin, who was... I think Renners was there, Ness was there, Swepo was there. I think Cooney was there as well. I'm sitting there and I'm like, I think I'm the only bloke sitting here that hasn't played for Australia. Yeah, well, um, if I was in your shoes, I would love to be sitting at that table chatting cricket with with those guys. Um, Josh, outside of playing cricket, uh, you've been able to get a job as a bat maker with uh, Cooper Cricket. And what is the secret to making good quality cricket bats? And um, how did you get involved with the business? Um, so originally, I got a phone call. I'd just been over in the UK playing and I got back. And they'd asked me if I could come in and help for two weeks with uh, the other side of the business, the signage side. And uh, that was three and a bit years ago now. Just ended up falling in love with the, the cricket side of it and stayed that, stayed on doing that. And the secrets of the um the bats is just like knowing or not so much knowing but understanding what bat is right for you well that's the biggest thing yeah that's tremendous and as someone who's played cricket and you know loved the game ever since you know i was a kid it's amazing to hear a story like yours you know a bat maker a grade cricketer making that transition into elite sport you know from that it's uh blown up Cooper Cricket as a business, which is fantastic, a, li- a lot more exposure, a lot more eyeballs for yourself and for the business. So yeah, it's a fantastic thing for you. Josh, you're up in Darwin at the moment playing grade cricket. And I know that a lot of you know cricketers who don't go to England do go up to Darwin to play. How are you going up there at the moment? And do you have any plans to play in some other T20 leagues around the world later in the year? Yeah, up and down, we're doing pretty well. Our last two games, we bowled them out for 66, and I think we've batted for 16 overs chasing, so total in the two games. I was only going to be up here for a month, and then I was going to head over to the US and play in the minor leagues, but that's all been pushed back due to some issue that they're having over there with, I think, the ICC, but I'm not too sure. Yeah, that's fantastic. We want to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Cooper Cricket. Cooper Cricket is a Brisbane-based company that provides high-quality cricket bats and can restore your old bats to their former glory. The business craft of their bats is using CNC technology mixed with old-school workmanship to ensure you end up with a cricket bat that suits your game no matter your age or ability. All of their bats are crafted from genuine English willow and are made to perform at the highest level. Their services are industry leading in quality with over 3,000 bats repaired since 2011. You can get fantastic custom cricket stumps and design them online. Other services include creating custom made marquees and banners for your game day event. Get in touch with Rod, Josh and the team at Cooper Cricket today. We were just talking off air before about T20 cricket and how the IPL itself has changed the game the IPL is continuing to back you know other T20 leagues around the world most recently we've seen the SA20 in South Africa where six of the IPL teams are backing you know franchises and then we've seen the new major league cricket in the US as well which Kolkata and Chennai and Mumbai are in which is fantastic what are your thoughts about the idea being floated around of cricketers going and signing one-year deals with these IPL franchises to go and play multiple leagues around the world? And do you see this as a danger to the game with people 
potentially turning down national contracts. We've seen what's happened with Trent Bolt. Do you think that national contracts could be turned down in the lure of these large scale deals? Yeah, I think it's definitely a possibility with it all. Like, I just sort of look at it as if to say, like, for myself, I'm not a Red Bull player. Like, I do enjoy it, but it's not the game that I perform best at. So it's sort of one of those things. Like, if I had the chance to go play T20 cricket around the world and play all year round, I would absolutely love it. But for other players, you know, they want to play test cricket. But yeah, I'm not too, not too sure. Outside of the BBL, is there any particular league that you'd like to play in? I know that um, the 100 in England, even though it's not necessarily T20 cricket, it's a T20 equivalent sort of thing. But, you know, do you see that type of um, tournament being of interest to you? Um, obviously, the IPL is going on at the moment, um, which is, you know, capturing a lot of eyeballs around the world. Or are there some of those other smaller leagues that might be of interest to you? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to play any league I could get into, to be honest. So I just love playing cricket. It's up and down at the moment. Not much else going on. But yeah, I'd love to play in whatever, whatever competition I could get into. And Josh, what do you do with yourself outside of cricket? We've talked about your explosive T20 batting. We've talked about your bat making for Cooper Cricket. What else do you do to keep yourself busy? Um, I absolutely love fishing. And I've just started getting back into golf again. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I'm sure you're catching some really good fish up in Darwin. Surely been out on the boats a fair few times. Yeah, yeah. I got my first barra last week. So that was pretty exciting. And Josh, one thing that I wanted to ask you is, you know, we talk about or players themselves talk about playing without fear when it comes to T20 cricket. You know, this, you see the likes of Finchy, Chris Gale, they go out and they just say, I play without fear and I'm not worried about getting out. And, you know, you seem, you know, from what we've seen on the TV, you look like a typical T20 cricketer. You're going to go out and just try and hit every ball for six, which is, you know, a fantastic attitude to have. Something I wish I had a bit more of um, when I was playing cricket myself. Um, I always just simply over, overthought the game and, you know, um, as kind of Shane Watson said with his new book, um, Winning the Inner Battle, the game is played between the ears sort of thing. So what's your mindset like when you go out to bat? Do you, how do you sort of leave your fears, expectations, all that stuff at the, at the door before you go out? Well, like in the big bash, my role's you know, pretty simple. I just go out and try hit it as far as I can in the first four overs. But I just believe that when I'm playing cricket, as the simpler I can keep it, the better. Because it's probably one of the most overcomplicated games there is, I'd say. And Josh, I just wanted to ask you as well about the Big Bash. Um, we've seen with the next TV rights deal from Fox and Seven that the competition will be reduced from 14 games to 10 games. Do you feel that will benefit the competition going forward? Or are you thinking more as a, you know, T20 white ball specialist, I would rather a longer tournament? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one because I, I just love playing cricket, so I don't really mind how many games it is. But I think for the, for the tournament itself, like hearing what some of my friends have told me, like they say the season just goes on too long and stuff like that. But I just love playing, so it just doesn't, doesn't affect me as much as it seems to affect others. But yeah. I think it'd be good. We see the IPL going on at the moment um, with a 10-team competition. Do you feel like the Big Bash would be a tougher competition, let's say, if the number of teams was reduced to, let's say, one for Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth, Hobart, Brisbane? Or do you feel like the Big Bash could still maybe introduce another one or two teams down the track? Tough one again. Like obviously they're shortening this, shortening the season, and I think the the season was long, so everybody played each other twice. But you know, if you took those two teams out, everyone plays each other twice. It still ends up being ten games. But if you had any extra teams, then all of a sudden it turns into you know eighteen game season if you're playing everyone twice. Yeah, we've seen the IPL do something a little bit different where 
there's a pool A and a pool B sort of thing. So you don't necessarily get to play everyone twice, but you get to play most teams twice. Do you think that's fair in a way, or do you think that it should almost just be a proper, all right, everyone plays each other twice, home and away, and then after that, you've got a pretty good indication of who your top four teams are going into finals or top five for Big Bash. Yeah, I, I, I like that more than having pools. Like we're in club cricket, we do pools and you could play, you could dominate your pool and then you go and play someone from another pool and they just absolutely flog you. But it's a bit, yeah, a bit of a tough one. So Josh, are there any particular venues that you've played at and you've, you know, been a little bit starstruck or in awe of, you know, what's around you? Yeah, the first time I walked out, uh, in top the stadium, like before the game started, before the crowd was in there, I walked out there and I just walked out to the middle. I looked around. And I was just like, this place is massive. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Josh, we've talked about on the podcast playing without fear. How how do you get out, go out to bat with a mindset of, I'm just going to try and hit every ball for six? Just try to keep it as simple as I can. Like when you walk out in the middle, you got all these different people screaming at you. You just sort of talk to your partner, clear your head, and just watch the ball. And then, yeah, for me, it's just try and hit it over the ropes as many times as possible. Before a game, um, do you have anything that you do to, you know, get yourself pumped up for a game? Do you listen to any particular type of music? How do you get yourself in a frame of mind ready to go for the contest? Uh, We have a playlist that we play before the game. You know, everyone chucks a song in. Mine is a remix of, you know, Down Under, done by Lou, and I just love it. That gets me all pumped up. You've been able to play with some pretty extraordinary blokes at the Brisbane Heat. Um, We've talked about the likes of Usman Khawaja, Manus Labuschagne. Can you tell us about a time that you've felt a little bit overwhelmed and almost starstruck by some of the blokes that you get to play with in the BBL? Yeah, yeah. When we we actually went to play in Tasmania uh, against Hobart and went to lunch with some of the boys, and you know I was sitting there with Marnus, Usman, Brentshaw, Ness, Swepo, Kuhneman was there, and I was sitting at the table and we just eating lunch, and it all just hit me that I was the only bloke that hadn't played cricket for Australia sitting at the table. Played a practice match against Afghanistan, so I got to face like Rashid and Majib, so that was pretty fun. What separates the people like yourself and like other cricketers who play Big Bash from those cricketers who, you know, love playing grade cricket on a Saturday or even community grassroots cricket? You know, what separates you from them? Um, I think it's all your mindset. Like, you know, if you're ready to compete at the highest level, it's just about staying mentally strong and obviously training your skill set as well. But I just believe it's a mental, a mental thing. Josh, I just want to ask you a question about success. What does it mean to you? For me, success, I would say, is like when I put my team in a good position and we're winning games of cricket, especially if I'm helping out, you know, I'm going out there and doing, getting, you know, a 60 off 30 or 30 off 15, just a little cameo, just to bump up the team, gets everyone going been able to play with some pretty extraordinary players at the Brisbane Heat. We've talked about Marnus and Kawaja, uh, Renshaw, um, but you've also got some pretty extraordinary coaches in the coaches box. Um, you've got Darren Lehman as a coach for the Brisbane Heat. Um, what's a piece of advice that he's given you um, that you've really taken on board? He just tells me to play my natural game like 100%. And, you know, it tells me if a left arm bowler com- comes on and swinging it back into me, just hit him for six. And same with an offy. If an offy comes on, right, I'm off spinner, just hit him for six. Josh, we talk about the mental capacity of a cricketer needing to be really strong to succeed in this game. And cricket is a game where you can have a lot of self-doubts. And I know that I've experienced that myself, even playing community cricket. Um, what can you do to overcome self-doubt and get yourself in a really positive mindset before you go out to bat? Yeah, my biggest thing is just like know that I belong out there. Again, just being mentally strong with it all and training it with the bat as well. 
I won't finish in that session unless I've hit 10 sixes, just something a little like that. It just helps me know that when I go out in the middle, I'm going to be able to do what I do. What does it look like and how do you celebrate success with your teammates? Usually we'll just go out and have a few beers, to be honest. Just enjoy each other's company when the vibe's going well because, as you know, it's cricket. It's not always a winning game. Josh, being a professional sportsman is not an easy task. And, you know, it's always great to live the highs of traveling around the country, playing cricket. Um, You know, you've been able to have an extraordinary opportunity with the Brisbane Heat. But at the same time, there would have been a lot of things that you've sacrificed to get to where you are right now in your cricketing career. Would you be able to tell us a little bit more about those? There has been a lot, like, you know, work, had to take a lot of time off work before the season started itself, like to train. That was training four times a week. And then obviously once the season started, you know, friends, family, loved ones, I wasn't around for two and a bit months, which made it a bit hard to keep those relationships, you know, solid enough. But yeah, it was tough, but it was worth it. There's a lot of advice that cricketers give other cricketers, but what's something that you would say to a youngster or to someone who's at the crossroads in their career and they're deciding whether they're going to continue even playing the game? Um, what's the best piece of advice that you could give a youngster right now? My biggest thing would be is to not let anyone tell you that you're not good enough to do it. But that's just basically putting an anchor on your own legs. It's, yeah, a bit silly. Like, it's just a quote that I love as well is what the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Oh, that's good. Josh, um, I just wanted to say thank you so much for giving up your time uh, for coming um, on In The Court and the place where every cricketer wants to be. And we certainly wish you all the best with any T20 leagues that you decide to to play in. And hopefully we'll uh, see you again for the Brisbane Heat in 23-24. Appreciate it, bro. And thank you for having me.